This is gonna be my experiment to see what I can get for my money on eBay. There's always filmmakers and, and you know camera people trying to dump their cameras on eBay. First thing is if you're if you're totally ice cold to this and you're you're just starting out as a, you know, you, maybe you wanna start a YouTube channel or you just you just wanna get your feet wet. As much as I hate that, you know, shoot video on your phone. Most phones will do it. A lot of phones actually have multiple lenses now, which is nice. Take that footage, put it into your computer. That'll help you, you know, edit and you'll be able to compose shots and that kind of stuff. But say you wanna actually take it, uh, maybe not more seriously, cause that's condescending, but maybe a little bit more, you know, what film production is actually uh, about. This is where you get a camera. So I've I've sort of two two camps on this. Version version A is a person who's just trying to get going. They're going to learn camera. They're going to learn that kind of stuff. Maybe the occasional short film. Maybe they're doing YouTube, but it's very you know their own stuff. Version B is a person who maybe they're in film school or they're going to be in film school or they're you know looking into starting a video production company. They're going to try to find a proper package that actually maybe could make them some money or they could bring on to gigs, not just not just throwaway stuff. Obviously version B is gonna be significantly more expensive, so we'll do version A first and version B, I think it's gonna be a little trickier. Yeah, let's get into it. This is gonna be a camera you're gonna learn on, so you're probably gonna hold on to it for a while. There's also the old adage, you know, date the camera body, marry the lenses. We're not gonna deal with that right now because the lenses you wanna marry are so expensive that unless you're uh, making money doing this, there's no point in investing in these, you know, multi-thousand dollar lenses. So we're gonna go basically cheapest camera, cheapest lenses, but we're gonna try to find a full a full package that's you know good to go uh, out of the box without having to get a bunch of stuff. So I think for the first one is yeah. So we're the version A starting off. Let's just put some put some rules in place just so I don't ruin my own life. Uh, camera plus two or more batteries and memory cards. Uh, you definitely need at least two batteries. You, you could get away with one memory card of, you know, a given size, but you're going to probably want to because at some point you're going to forget to dump footage or your memory card's going to fail just because it's a thing that happens. Two memory cards. Memory cards are getting cheap these days, so it's pretty, pretty fine. Um, it's also going to probably be a 1080p uh, camera. There's no reason, especially when you're starting out, to, to shoot in a 4K format. And if you don't know what that means, then you definitely, definitely don't need to. But 4K basically... It's just more data for no reason. Almost everything I shoot, uh, even professionally, ends up in 1080p. The exceptions are short films or music videos, something that you know requires a crew and has a bunch of other other stuff going on. Then it's worth having a higher resolution camera because you're expecting to, in post production when you're editing it, also do some color grading or do some you know fancy stuff with it. But for regular stuff, especially for like going up to, onto YouTube. Uh, 1080p is fine, and every camera basically will do 1080p. The thing to remember is the 4K is, is awesome, but it's also four times the size of 1080p. So it's four times the amount of data. So your average computer can handle a ton of 1080p footage without much trouble. The 4K, you have to have a pretty, a pretty up-to-date, pretty hardcore computer. So that's kind of where it is. Film festivals will take 1080p. Uh, a lot of times they'll take 720p, which some people still do, which is crazy to me because it's a whole level smaller. We're going to want two lenses. Uh, one of them is probably going to be the kit zoom lens, uh, which is just the lens that comes with any, you know, consumer camera. It's a zoom lens. It's it's usually the equivalent of like a 24 millimeter to like a 70 millimeter or like a 50 millimeter. It's, it's called like a normal zoom. Basically, it gives you a kind of wide angle all the way zooming into a kind of a kind of like normal or tight angle. So yeah, it's it's very useful. It'll it'll basically cover what you need. Uh, you're not gonna do crazy wide angles usually when you're making films, unless you're doing skate films. And also being really zoomed in, you'll find when you're making movies is really, really, really frustrating because it's hard to maintain focus and it's hard to keep whatever you're recording in the shot. So to have a normal lens, which is sort of a medium wide to sort of a medium tight is kind of the sweet spot. You'll probably find as you're doing this, that you, you have a certain wider or tighter that you prefer. But if you go too far in either direction, it kind of works against you. The good thing is most cameras come with a kit zoom lens. So that's that's taken care of. They're notorious for not being as good as other lenses, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. The other thing you want to do is a prime and probably the equivalent of like a portrait lens, which is sort of on the on the tighter side, on the, on the more zoomed in side. 50 millimeter, you know, full frame equivalent. It means nothing. In most cases, it's it's like a 35 millimeter. If you're getting a Micro Four Thirds camera, like a Panasonic or an Olympus, uh, 25 millimeter. So anything between like 25 and like 40 millimeter, I'd say is basically the prime lens you want. Um, moving on, uh, we're, we are gonna want a fluid head tripod, which is different from a 
a traditional photography tripod because the head is fluid. The head uh, will give you resistance when you move around because it's used for motion picture. And that fluid head tripod needs to have a leveling bowl of some kind. If you don't know what, what any of that means, I'll, I'll point you to, to some tripods too. And then audio, most cameras can take onboard audio or, or just have speakers or have uh, mics that will record audio. The first thing you're gonna realize is it sounds terrible because whatever whoever's talking is usually not close enough to the to the mics on the camera for it to work. The common thing has been to mount a shotgun microphone on the top of the camera with the audio going into the camera to record. That's cool, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. I, especially for filmmaking stuff, kind of prefer some cheapo uh, lavalier mics like this and then just run them right into your phone because your phone can record audio. It's nice to have a recorder or a way to get the audio directly into camera, but it's not strictly necessary. And if you're doing something like narrative or, or any of that kind of stuff or talking head stuff, a lavalier microphone might actually be a better situation for you because you can get the lav pretty close to the, the noises, the mouth. So yeah, let's try to find it. Uh, let's just do uh, camera package or say camera kit with lenses. We'll see what happens. I'm not super convinced that's gonna work out. We'll do US only because I'm in America and we'll do buy it now and sh uh, price shipping lowest, although I don't think they know my shipping, which is fine. And we're gonna do, what was I gonna look for? I don't know. Um, camera with lenses. There's always people trying to get rid of their first cameras. All right, so a 7D with two lenses, two memory cards. Uh, this is a portrait person, I can already tell. Uh, this is tougher than I thought. A 90D, 400D. God, for 400 bucks though, it's almost worth it. Um, let's just let's, let's do this. Wow, I can't believe a G7 is 300 bucks now for uh, an open box one, that's wild. Um, here we go, here's a video kit. Um, is this price low shipping? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, well, we got a G7. Uh, let's just do G85. We'll do, I'll, I'll do the other brands in a minute. Um, but the G85 is a little bit more expensive. 350 just for the camera, yeah, that's pretty, okay. So uh, let's just look at this G7. Okay, so it's a G7 with the 14 to 42 millimeter kit lens, which because this is micro four thirds is going to act like a 28 to 44. Nope, 84, 28 to 84. So that's pretty decent. Um, 28 is fine. Uh, so yeah, 14 to 42, um, yeah. These things shoot 4K, although it's probably not worth it. But this is a this is a, a good deal, I think. We got how many batteries? Let's see what he says. Um, 14 to 42 lens and a 25 millimeter, so that's the 50 millimeter equivalent. Extra battery, DC coupler, adapter, no box, road mic. Yeah, so this is this is pretty decent for 400 bucks, I'd say. Um, the only, the only, my only complaint about this is the situation that I'm in too, which is I have a bunch of mirrorless lenses and mirrorless cameras, uh, for micro four thirds. And there's basically no future in micro four thirds at this price point though. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's, you know, like if you're getting a camera, like a Canon, for instance, like a Canon rebel, um, in theory, you could use those lenses on cameras going for, uh, you know, cam more cameras down the road, but. I don't know if you'd want to at this point. So 400 bucks for uh, a starter a starter G7 kit. That's very decent. Um, and the thing that stands out about the G7, other than the fact that it does 4K, which is hilarious to me, um, that's a fully articulating screen, which means you can you can turn it and face yourself. So that's, that's pretty decent. I like that a lot. Um, let's do Canon Rebel. Let's do full video kit. T6i, T5i, 
55. Okay, so it looks like the, all the i versions of the Canon Rebel, at least in the US, have the articulating screen. I'm probably wrong, but full kit. This is trickier than I thought, just because it's hard to find this stuff. UT5i mic. This one might be interesting though. So the 18 to 250, that's a super zoom. That's a Sigma. And then this is the 50, I believe. Yeah, 51.8. That's pretty, so honestly, pretty solid. 360, your best offer. Comes with a bag, comes with a microphone I don't recognize. It comes with a little stand tripod, which will get you going. Hey, I, that's an old Sigma lens. I'm not familiar with that Sigma lens, but or that microphone, but hey, that's fine. Oh, and it even has audio controls on it. Interesting. That's gonna be tough to beat, I gotta say. 360 bucks, so that's gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be the Canon choice for sure. Okay, so 400 bucks for a G7, uh, 360 for a Canon. Okay, what else would I do? Sony, so yeah, Sony, see how far we get. It's probably gonna be the Sony A60 something. Maybe an A6300? Yeah, okay, so we'll try that. Whew, too expensive. Well, let's just do A6000 and just know that you're gonna have to stop and let it cool off. 500 bucks, 349, 399. This generation of Sony cameras was a little bit just less common than the Canons. And that's why they're more expensive, I feel like. And they're a little bit newer. For what you're getting, I don't think it's worth it. Because the Canons are just a little bit better in this case. Um, it's not the case with the newer Sonys, but yeah, so we'll just, we'll just call it Canon. Okay, so for the version A, the up-and-comer Canon T5i with a zoom lens and a 50 millimeter lens and a mic, hard to beat. It's got the articulating screen because it's the I version, not the just the regular T5. Uh, or for 423 bucks, you got a Panasonic G7, which is a slightly newer camera. It does shoot 4K, kind of. I mean, it technically does. It comes with a zoom lens. It comes with a 25 millimeter lens, and it comes with a mic. I'll tell you right now, the more, the more, like the better quality that you're going to get, the better image quality will be the Panasonic, without question. However, just for ease of use and the fact that everybody is familiar with Canon, I think you're better off saving whatever. For 60 bucks and going with the Canon. Um, so yeah, Canon T5i. Um, so yeah, for, so for 360 bucks, 400, 450 bucks tops, you can get a used Canon T5i or T6i or T7i. They're all more or less the same. Let's go ahead and, tr you know, source a tripod and I'm going to actually go to Amazon in the same way, date the body, marry the lens. You're supposed to buy a really nice tripod that's going to last you your whole career. When you're starting out, you don't need to do that. Just buy a tripod that technically works, 100 bucks, 90 or 100 bucks is going to be what it costs uh, to get one that I would trust. Uh, this Komen fluid head one, it's got this interesting design where it's it's a video head, although it doesn't have any adjustments, so it's not really a video head, but it's a video head that that um, has this leveling base underneath it, so you plop the tripod down and then you can level it. Um, the annoying thing is it's it's its own design, so it can't you can't, it's not universal. Um, but if it's the only, if it's your tripod, it's your tripod. So alternately you can get this video tripod from some store I've never heard of, uh, off of Amazon. I kind of like the, the, the way the legs work better cause they have a clamp and they have a twist instead of a clamp. Um, but yeah, they have this, uh, leveling head. I believe it's a 75 millimeter leveling head. That's what you want. That's the actual like video technology is this bowl head that sits on with a, with a head on top. Um, so you just plop the tripod down, you get the bowl level and then you can, you know, do whatever you want on top. 89 bucks. That's probably the, that's probably the move. Uh, yeah. So let's just, uh, let's call it another hundred bucks for a tripod, call it 400 bucks for 500 bucks, which is not cheap. I mean, 500 bucks is not cheap. Uh, you can get started. I think that's, I think that's totally fair. I would be confident to have this Canon. And the thing is when you're, when you're working with it, when you're, when you're handling it, Everybody who's used cameras has handled a Canon at some point, and so they can, you can get help. And, you know, the same way there's 
a million Final Cut tutorials on YouTube and Vimeo uh, or a, a million Adobe Premiere tutorials. Yeah, there's a huge there's a huge universe of Canon stuff, so that's helpful. Whereas Panasonic is a little less common. That's what I would do. I would for the for version A, I would go with the, the Canon, and then I would go with the tripod. So there you go, um, and then we'll work on version B. So now we're on to version B, which is definitely going to be more expensive. But the idea is this camera is going to work with you. It's going to probably be a little bit more complex than uh, Panasonic G7 or a Canon T5 uh, with better features. But the idea is you can bring it to set or you can have it available. Maybe you could rent it out. Maybe you could rent this as part of your package when you go out to work, that kind of thing. Short films, yes. Maybe YouTube, yes. But definitely much more of a prosumer instead of just a consumer. Um, and I also want to talk about the idea of the, probably like two categories, ENG and crew. ENG, electronic news gathering, so news or, or live stuff. Uh, so that's one kind of camera. Usually they're more camcordery. They have different uh, outputs because uh, usually they're transmitting somewhere uh, versus crew. And by crew, I mean short films, music videos, uh, anything, anything more creative. So, you know, ENG cameras and more like cinema cameras. That's kind of, that's kind of what I mean. So um, some stipulations on this one. I want to go ahead and just jump in here. We definitely want to try to find like a used kit that a filmmaker is selling. Ideally, this camera is going to be a uh, 10 bit color, hopefully some better codecs than just consumer stuff. Uh, we need a power solution. You know, usually they take more batteries cause they're more battery uh, hungry. And then memory sometimes is unique to whatever the camera is. Um, although unless it's a red, you can usually buy the memory from somewhere else. In addition to that, we, we probably want a full range of lenses, at least uh, a couple of zooms, but probably uh, it'd be cheaper to do a set of primes. I'm thinking 24 to 100 full frame equivalent. So if it's a micro four thirds camera, it'd be like 12 to 50, or if it's an APS-C camera, it'd be uh, 18 to whatever that number is, 65. I don't, I don't remember. I'm going to go ahead and skip audio for this one. Cause I feel like it's more contextual. Uh, if you're the kind of person who's going to be working in this environment, you already have, you already know, or you can ask somebody uh, a lot of times it's, you know, a two set or a four set of lavalier, wireless lavaliers. Sometimes it's a shotgun mic. Uh, it really depends on the situation. Y you'll, you'll probably know based on where you're working. So I did end up, you know, properly thinking this through because it's more specific and there's just less cameras, especially in the cheaper used market that sort of fit the bill. So I was thinking for crew, uh, black magic pocket cinema camera, 4k, you can still buy them new for 1300 bucks, but, uh, they're all over the internet for all sorts of prices. Um, if you really want to even scale it down further, you could get the original pocket cinema camera, but it's not quite as useful as the, uh, the pocket 4k just cause pocket 4k is a lot more updated and has, you know, better everything. And so for ENG, I ended up selling on Sony and that's mostly because just Sony seems to be what everybody's asking for these days outside of highly creative stuff where you have a little bit more choice. So, you know, ideally you want like an FX six or an FX nine or something, or even an FX uh, three. But those are way too expensive. And so what I really found was the old ENG models, the FS5 or the 5 Mark II or the FS7, the 7 Mark II, they're sort of bridging the gap between ENG and the proper FX cameras, which are, you know, cinema cameras for broadcast. All right, let's see what we can find. Yeah, okay, so for the Blackmagic, I found some interesting things. First of all, you can get the body for like 800, 900 bucks uh, just on its own. I did find one though, it's 2,500 bucks or best offer, and it comes with some batteries and some Rokinon lenses and uh, a monitor, the camera, 800 bucks against 2,500. So 1,700 bucks for everything else, probably 1,500 bucks for the batteries, 1,400. So they're, they're saying four Rokinon lenses are worth 1,400 bucks. So 400 bucks a piece, that's, that's actually a pretty decent deal. And they're EF uh, Rokinon lenses, which means they're adaptable to everything. And it comes with a speed booster. Pretty decent deal now that I'm looking at it, honestly. This is the film school special, it really is. It does come with a 35 millimeter TD Arson lens, which is not a fancy lens, but I, I actually, I've used them and I like them. So for 2,500 bucks a better offer, sure. You know, if you want to get into the Rokinon world, the first thing you're going to learn is you get high roaded and, and big dogged about having Rokinons just because they're the affordable lens, uh, but that's fine for what, for what you're doing. That's probably fine. Separately, you could just buy the camera for 800 bucks. And I found a Rokinon four lens set for 450 bucks. They're, I believe they're micro four thirds mount, which is why they're so cheap because unlike the, this one, which these lenses are EF mount. So they're, they can fit anything from a Canon camera to anything that's, you know, a mirrorless camera, uh, micro four third mount versions only fit micro four third mount 
cameras, which that's why that's that's a reason why you don't want to buy micro four third mount uh, lenses if you don't have to is because they they only work for micro four thirds. Whereas if you buy other stuff, Canon EF uh, is the one that adapts to everything. That's really the move. So, but I mean, for four Rokinons for a micro four thirds mount. 450 bucks. That's, I mean, that's a crazy, that's a crazy deal. I might actually bid on this just because that's, so it's a 12, a 24, 35, and 85. That's, yeah, it's a cool deal. So, and either way, you're going to want to add a tripod. I'll do the tripod at the end. And then we go to the FX30, FX30 world. Because it's such a new camera, 1500 bucks used or new is 1700 bucks or thereabouts. I think you can get a deal on it. Yeah, so 1500 bucks isn't exactly a deal. You might want to buy buy new if you're going to spend that kind of money just because a warranty. We'll call it 1600 bucks. Um and then you end up in a situation where you got like two options really for for Sony and the advantage of buying Sony is Sony's autofocus like Canon's dual pixel autofocus is excellent for what you're going to start out with. You're going to probably end up with manual lenses just cuz it's it's a cheaper entry unless you just want to have one lens, but that's not going to be super helpful. So you could probably have to rent. So short of that, we got Sony E-mount Rokinon. Sony mount lenses are still cheaper than a set of four Canon EF lenses because they're stuck on Sony E-mount for the same reason the Micro Four Thirds ones are. A thousand bucks for, it looks like a 24, a 35, a 50, and I believe that's a, it's either 12 or 16. Let's look. 24, 35, 50, 85. Yeah. So alternately, you can get a three pack of TT Artisan lenses, which are these cheap lenses from China, 300 bucks uh, for a, it's a 17, a 35 and a 50. Is that what it is? Yeah. 17, 35, 50. These are little tiny manual focus lenses. Uh, and as long as you put them on APS-C, which the FX30 is, you're good. Probably just stick with the standard versus the Cine DS, which are, I think, are these all full frame lenses? I don't actually remember. I think these are all full frame. The 16 is not. And I think the 12, you can either get full frame. And option C is obviously buy used lenses and adapt them. Vintage lenses, Canon FD, uh, or Olympus, or any of them, uh, which I've been down that road. But it's just nice to have at least, you know, Rokinon cine lenses, just because they're, yeah, adapting lenses can be a whole thing. So looking at it here, it looks like the Blackmagic cinema camera is far and away the better deal. Um, image quality wise, it might be true because the Blackmagic makes an incredible image. Although you do kind of need a colorist to really get the most out of it. Uh, whereas the Sony's, you don't necessarily have to because you can, you know, use s tone. Although I'm not sure if the FX30 has s tone. I, th I think it might. Um, but the difference is the Blackmagic you have to rig up. And so it's it's $1,300 on there, but it's probably another like $300 for rigging stuff. Uh, another three or $500 worth of batteries and memory cards and stuff. Uh, the FX30 obviously is, you know, you're starting even without extra batteries and memory cards, you're at 2,600 bucks, but you don't necessarily need to rig it out. You can treat it like a small camera. It's also the same body as the FX3. It's it's bigger sister, um, which the FX3 is famously like a B camera to all the Sony cinema cameras. So really the FX30 is either the B camera to the FX3 or it's a B camera to the other cinema cameras also. And so that's sort of the appeal to the FX30 is it's a much cheaper version of the FX3 that can still, in all the ways that matter, behave like, like an FX3, uh, which is super useful for multi-camera stuff and collaborating with other Sony users, which is very much a thing. All right, and let's go fishing for some ENG Sony cameras. Here we go. Okay, so the Sonys. Um, yeah, you can pick up an FS5 uh, Mark I. Uh, there's a Mark I, Mark II. I'm not even sure there's a huge difference in the quality, but 739 or 729 free shipping for this one. Uh, comes with a battery and a charger. So that might actually, that's, uh, does it come with a, does it come with the, the monitor too? I think it does. Yeah, it does. That's a pretty sweet deal. I have to say, uh, battery charger includes small rig. What does it say? Uh, that's everything, but, a but the lens and the lens, the kit lens that comes with it is pretty awesome, but that's, that's, I buy that. So, but even then, you know, you can get any of these, I'd say a thousand dollars is a pretty good number for these and then for a really nice kit like two thousand dollars and so let's say sixteen hundred dollars for the fs5 um and then we'll just do you know the thousand dollar broken on lenses that we saw a minute ago because that's so crazy fs7 for the kind of the same reason they started a thousand dollars and you know for a really good set that's in pretty good shape for sixteen hundred bucks isn't that wild so say maybe two thousand dollars conservatively and what's crazy is, you know, the FS7 doesn't really cost that much more than uh, an FX30, 
That's a real tricky thing. Honestly, I don't know. For as for for the job you would do comparing an FS7 to an FX30, I'm not really I don't know. I think given the fact the FS5 costs the same as the FS7, I'd probably get the FS7. Um, just because it's you're gonna get you're gonna get a better everything out of it, you know. So and it's e-mount, so everything adapts to e-mount. Um, we do need a tripod though. So yeah, as far as tripods go, um, you do want a nice enough one that isn't going to break right away. You want to have it for at least a few years. Uh, and then once you have more money, once you sort of get your career going, you buy a much more expensive, much more hardy uh, one. I'd say the cheapest one I'd be comfortable with at this level is probably either the Benro S6 or S8. Probably the S8, just because it's, it's a bigger tripod, it's a bigger head. I think the legs are the same, actually. Uh, or the Manfrotto, at minimum, the 502 uh, you know, $700 one, probably the 504X though, which is a $1,200 tripod. Um, yeah, the legs are the weakest part of the, the whole thing when it comes to the 504X, but I'd say probably call it 700 bucks, um, for a decent, a decent tripod. You could easily spend twice that. So really when you're, when you're talking about version B, the, the prices are, are significantly more expensive because you can sort of get away with, you know, 400, 500, maybe $600, uh, if you're just starting out with the Canon, but when you're actually trying to use it for, for work, whatever the, you know, direction you go, narrative scripted movie filmmaking stuff, or, you know, ENG or Sony world, uh, which has overlap, but, um, certainly Sony is just all over the place now. So I, I don't know as far as, as far as the, the creative stuff, yeah, I would still I would still go with the FX30 just because you might be able to get w more work uh, as a second camera or a backup to other Sony cameras. Um, as far as ENG goes, yeah, I think probably the FS7 just because it's it's a superior camera to the FS5, but you're not entering the crazy cost of the FX3 or the FX6. Um, yeah, so but so getting out the door uh, if you're if you're doing the the scripted movies, you know, music video stuff, $1,600, $2,600, $3,400 more or less, um, probably closer to 4,000 all told, uh, as far as ENG $3,000. So probably like four, 4,500, you know, out the door. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's cheaper than I thought. I feel like 10 years ago, this would have been twice the cost, but okay. So some takeaways, uh, I mean, if you just want to get going as a filmmaker, you know, whatever camera you can get your hands on that has, you know, an extra lens or two, that's, that's definitely the move. I think the Canon T5i is just a crazy, a crazy good spot or T6, T7, T8, you know, whatever's, whatever's cheap. Panasonic G7, don't sleep on it. It's still awesome. The G85 is the bigger sister. I have a GX8 actually, um, which is the bigger sister to that. A uh, hundred dollar tripod is going to fall over and break and probably break your camera. Just know that that's what you're investing in. Um, as far as version B, the the little bit more legit. I love the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and I don't regret buying it. And I bought it uh, pretty young in its life, and it's it's never not been exceptional. But you have to rig it up, and it becomes a big camera very quickly. And also, most of the time, I don't need ProRes, and so like this footage, I'm gonna re-encode into uh h265 just because it's it's a smaller file by like seven or ten times um but i can't knock the fact that the fx30 even though it's literally twice the price of a blackmagic pocket 4k is it twice the camera no but it has the capacity probably to get you a little bit more work uh just working with other sony people because sony's are all over the all over the map right now um as far as the eng stuff fs5 handled it. We'll handle it again. Uh, no complaints other than the fact that it's an old camera. Um, FS seven for the same reason, you know, if you can get a sweet deal on an FS five, I think that's great. If you can get a sweet deal on FS seven, I'd say that's probably preferred, uh, minimum seven or $800 tripod, probably close to like $1,200 just to be comfortable with using it professionally and having it not, you know, bits not fall apart while you're working. Yeah. So I don't know. So I think this was more useful if you're looking at it from somebody who's starting, 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 and maybe you're trying to get off of phone videography and trying to, you know, actually have a proper camera, 
the yeah the the those cameras and the the bun the it seems like cost performance for those kind of cameras seems to be exceptional. Um, as far as the more expensive stuff, yeah, it's it's gonna it really does seem like it's gonna be a case by case basis on what kind of work you're getting, what kind of work you're expecting to get, that kind of thing. I mean, I wish my Blackmagic camera got more use than it does. Um, I've been I've been putting a lot of hours on it, but it rents out occasionally, and I have it on ShareGrid. Um, and I'm one of a few around here. Uh, I think if I had the 6K, one of the 6K models, it would be rented out a lot more because productions seem to really like those cameras a lot more. But uh, yeah, I'm not I I'm not even sure I would upgrade uh, to to the 6K camera when when I financially felt like it, just because I'm happy with what this one's doing and. I'm not doing that kind of work anyway. Uh, having said that, the FX30, even though it's a new camera, is pretty interesting to me. It's definitely out of what I'd be con comfortable spending right now. But if I was starting out and I didn't have a camera and maybe I had, you know, a little bit of forward momentum into work, maybe it's worth renting the FX30 for a few gigs, saving up some money, and then just pulling the trigger and start going into that world. Uh, I don't know. And then, and then when it comes to ENG stuff, the pro stuff is pro stuff, and the FS7 is going to probably get you by at least for a few more years because it's 4K, as are you know the the crew things. Those the Pocket 4K and the FX30 are also 4K, um, but you know the FS6, the FX6, and the FX3 uh, are really the those are the cameras right now that are doing all doing all the work that I'm coming across, um, with specific exceptions. I feel like. A few years ago, it would have been all Canon stuff, and then all of a sudden, Canon. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I was looking at Canons in here uh, while I was doing this, and I. It's real tempting, but if if you're planning on having the camera work for you, other than just your workhorse camera, like renting it out or people asking you on because of the camera you have. I'm just not. I think that's why all the Canon C300s right now are selling online for like two or three grand, uh, because you know, the $12,000 camera that nobody, nobody's using anymore because they've moved on to other stuff, um, even newer Canon. So the, there's def, there seems to be clearly a price of entry if you want to treat this even the most pretend reel that I'm talking about. However, the price to just make stuff with your friends and have a, have a set that you can sort of learn, learn the fundamentals on you know, in a, in a, in a way where when you break it, you're like, well, it's not worth anything. So that's fine. I don't, I don't have to, I'm not even to baby my stuff. It's like, you know, you, you don't want to learn on your brand new sports car. You want to learn on a, on a beater because you're going to, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to beat on it. And then when you're done with it, you're going to have fond memories of beating on it as you drive your fancy car. It's the same thing with cameras. I feel like, uh, lenses too. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe if I do another one of these, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe price, what it would be worth if you were like a working DP to invest in a proper set of cine lenses, how that could look. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, what, what are the, what are the questions you would go on the internet for? Cause this is just silly stuff that I do sometimes, uh, like, share, subscribe, catch you on the next one.